Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. Today, Aptera released this press release, They talk, which kind of, finally we get the details of the US Capitol uh, Global Securities release. And it looks like what they're doing is a convertible note, uh, the convertible note offering. Now we're gonna get into that, what that means and the details of that in another video. But the interesting thing about this announcement is when you click this button, it sends you to the US, uh, uh, Capital Global Securities website, and you can download this Aptera Motors investment presentation and the Aptera Motors executive summary. And so I've downloaded for you, I've looked into this thing. So this is the investor presentation. And the interesting thing that I think everyone's um, gonna key into immediately is we know now the drivetrain of the Aptera. It is produced by Vitesco Technologies. This is a company I've never heard of before. Um, so I kind of looked into it and this Tesco Technologies is, um, it used to be something called Continental Powertrain and Continental AG is the third largest automotive supplier. Um, I mainly know Continental because I buy bicycle tires from them and they, that's one of the many things that they do but they supply a lot of automotive parts and they are the third largest automotive supplier. They supply everyone from Toyota to GM to Honda to Porsche, BMW, Volvo, Ford, Volkswagen, Benz, all, all kinds of places. So, so they're huge. And they made a powertrain division and then they spun it off and it became Vitesco Technologies. And Vitesco Technologies has um, a powertrain and I'm gonna make a guess, I think, uh, Chris McCannon has said that in the July update, they are going to give full details about the drivetrain and stuff. But now that we know the company that's making the drivetrain, you know, they've just, they've released it right here, that this is the company that's making the drivetrain. Um, you can make some pretty good guesses about what the drivetrain is going to be. Exact details are not known, but um, uh, you can get a pretty good idea of what it is. And, and what it is, is I believe that they're using this the high voltage axle drive, EMR4. They also make an EMR3, that's their older version, but I'm assuming they're gonna use the newer version, which is the EMR4, which is slightly better. So why would you not use that if, if that's what you're going with? And here's the details of it. Um, so it is an integrated, it's a fully integrated system. So the inverter, the gearbox, and the motor come as one piece. They call it an axle drive. So instead of like a hub drive, it's an axle drive. So I think, you know, you're still gonna need a, uh, um, you're still gonna need a, um, a CV joint and an axle, but uh, everything is integrated in one module. And you can, they can create this motor to various specifications. So they can make the power anywhere from 80 to 230 kilowatts. So 80 kilowatts for those people that work in freedom units is about 107 horsepower. So you can make this motor um, 107 horsepower up to 230 kilowatt hours, which is, you know, about three, three times that. Um, so 300 horsepower, that's quite a bit of power. And you, it's very torquey. Um, and here's the other important thing. The weight goes from 45 to 80 kilograms. So 45 kilograms is about 100 pounds, not not extremely heavy. Um, so I don't know. My guess is that there's one of these driving each front wheel. So um, that that means that if you put 100 and the, the smallest motor, 107 a horsepower motor, the thing's going to have 200, you know, 14 horsepower. That's a, that's a ridiculous amount of horsepower for um, a car of that size and weight. Um, so I think you're going to have one uh, for each wheel. So two of these motors. And I don't know if this allows you to, it to continue to have torque vectoring or not. All right. So what do we know about this motor other than that? It's been used in several other um, vehicles and um, I kind of looked into it. Oh, did I, did my motor, okay, here we go. I thought my uh, mouth just died. Okay, so here's here's one. Um, there is a Chinese company called Dongfeng. They are the largest Chinese auto group. They make a ton of vehicles in the Chinese market and they are using uh, Vitesco's uh, e-axle 
And one of the vehicles for sure that it's being used in is uh, this one called the, I'm probably not going to pronounce it right, but the G1, the G1 um, motor. So that's, they've been, so Dong Fang has been using Vitesco Technologies. Um, Citroen, I, I don't know if that's the, how it's pronounced. Someone in the, someone tell me how it's actually pronounced. Um, but uh, this is a group like this, uh, the PSA group, they merged with Fiat Chrysler and now they're called Stellantis. But this Stellantis or PSA group has been using these um, Vitesco motors on many of their vehicles. So this is one of them. Uh, and the other ones that are being used is uh, the Peugeot, that's the Peugeot, the Opel Corsa E, and Hyundai has been using them in several of their models that they sell in China. They're small SUVs and sedans, the Encino and the La Festa. Um, there's the DS3 Crossback E tents. Those are those also use it as well as the Vauxhall Corsa E. And then interestingly, Sono Motors was planning on using them before they went belly up. So Sono Motors, you guys, we, those of us who've been following out there for a long time, know that Sono, the Scion, was um, another solar EV. They unfortunately did not raise enough money and had to shut down the EV portion of their business. Um, I looked at their stock; they are not doing well at all. They were planning on becoming more of a solar integration company, but um, I don't know how that's working out for them. Um, but anyway, they were also planning on using the Sono motors. The other uh, thing they were doing is, let's see. Okay, yeah, this one is talking about the Opel Corsa E. And, oh yeah, here we go. So this is a Honda. The Honda CRV plug-in fuel cell vehicle that's going to be marketed in the U.S. and Japan in late 2024. That's going to come in with the um, with the uh emr3 now the emr3 I'm, I'm surprised that honda's going with the emr3 there's an emr4 available but they're still going with the emr3 uh, i don't know what the reasoning for that is um especially since it's a newer vehicle the older vehicles have already been like uh, hyundai's vehicles have been using the emr4 for a while but anyway this is a proven drivetrain solution used in lots of cars for at least the past uh three or four years uh, since the the first um, the first uh, press release was back in like 2019, and um, Vitesco is um, part of Continental. Continental is a very old company that's been around for a long time. Again, they are the third largest automotive supply supplier, and uh, they've been making um, EV powertrains for even longer than that. So it's not like a, a startup company. This is a this is a well-known company. They're delivering powertrain solutions to, um, you know, companies like Honda, Stellantis, Hyundai, and uh, the largest manufacturer in China, Dongfeng. So um, that does reduce a lot of the supply chain risk because, um, like, Vitesco is hundred percent going to be able to deliver this thing, and it's a proven solution. It's in lots of vehicles. We know the. Um, we know the reliability of it. It's been tested for many years in real world situations with real consumers. And, you know, it, it obviates a lot of the initial concerns with the hub motors that a lot of detractors had. And I know a lot of us were supporting hub motors. And I think hub motors are still a great thing. And Aptera still plans on building, um, using the hub motors at some point in the future. I don't really know what the issue with the hub motors was, but I suspect that it was my guess if i had to guess is that um that alafe had you know they had lordstown they had lightyear they had um aptera and i think that a lot of their product development and scale up for their production facilities was based on having uh, income streams from those companies but once lordstown and lightyear fell through um, and lordstown was the most well capitalized of those companies but they went bankrupt then. I don't think that um, uh, Elafe had the capital to continue uh, production at the rate that Aptera needed, or maybe some of their development was not completely done. This is just me speculating. But anyways, for whatever reason, 
they are not going with the hub motors. They still like the idea of hub motors. Hub motors are simpler. They are probably more efficient and they have many advantages that Aptera wanted to capitalize on. But in order to get the vehicle to market, they're going to go to a proven solution. And the proven solution, I believe, and this is going to be confirmed within a month, is this EMR4 axle drive. Maybe it's the EMR3, but I'm pretty sure it's this EMR4. Um, and that is a solution that's been in many, many vehicles. All right. So tell me what you guys think uh, about this uh, revelation. We're going to go into more details of this investor presentation in upcoming videos. So um, stay tuned for that. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.